With everything that's been going on in the world today, I've had the feeling that this was a good time to review our security procedures. <laughs> yeah, I know, exciting topic, but it's something that needs to be done, especially if you're new to blogging, new to social media, or just being online at all. This is stuff you need to know. So let's get to it. Welcome to Blog Oklahoma. Hello, everyone. We need to have a little chat today. I don't mean to scare you, but your accounts online, your banking account, your hospital account, your insurance account, your Netflix account, your Hulu account, your uh, Disney Plus account, if you use an online service, you are actively being targeted by hackers right at this very moment. People are trying to steal your information. I know, that's kind of scary, isn't it? Now, there are some steps that you can do to help prevent this from happening. One, you need to use secure passwords. This is the most important, the one I'm going to drill into your head. Use long, complicated passwords. I'm talking 12, 16 letters long. Use alphabets, capital letters, lowercase letters. Use numbers. And use special characters like uh, ampersand and pound and underscore. They need to be complicated. I know. That is annoying as can be. You're going to go, I can never remember these passwords. I agree. <laughs> I don't remember half my passwords. And they are complicated as can be. But there is something you can do about that. You can use what's called a password manager. Now, the one that I'm using personally is called LastPass. I am paying for it. I'm using the pro version. Uh, I've been using it for years. It is secure. It is reputable. Um, and it manages all my passwords. And it'll even help me generate those complicated passwords. Now, if you want to use something that well, you can remember, you can use a uh, passphrase. Something that has three, four, maybe six words in it. But also remember to include numbers and the special characters in there. You know, uh, one example would be use, uh, what was that really uh, disturbing television commercial? Oh, yeah. Uh, baby puppy monkey. <laughs> baby puppy monkey. Those three words together. Now, at, you know, mix the case up, a capital, a lowercase p, a capital U, etc. Throw in a number, an 8, a 7, a 9. You know, do some special characters, an underscore, an exclamation point. You've got it. But that would be something you can remember. Also, what you can do to keep yourself secure is to use multi-factor authentication. Most modern services use multi-factor authentication, so turn it on. What that does is you download an app on your phone because you always have your phone with you, either your iPhone or your Android phone. You download an app. I use one from LastPass and I use one from Microsoft. I've got multiple authentication apps. You go to your service, you, you log in, you say, I want to use multi-factor authentication. You check a box, a thing will pop up that says scan this code. You open your phone up, you go to the authenticator app, you add that code to your phone, and then the next time you log in, after you type in your username and password, you'll have to type in this six-digit number that's on your phone. So it's equivalent to locking the doorknob lock and the deadbolt of your door. Okay, one extra bit of security I want to go over, and that is email security. Do not click on any link inside of email. Make sure that email is from a reputable site. Um, if you think it's from your bank or the IRS or the Social Security office or your hospital, it is a good chance 
It is not from them. It might look like it, but it's not. If they ask you to log in from a link, that's definitely a red flag. Do not do it. If you want to make sure, you call your bank directly. Don't use the phone number in that email. Go get it from the phone book. Or log directly into your bank's website. Don't use the link. Type it in, mybank.com. These kind of scams are called phishing scams. That's spelled with a P-H, phishing. Um, they're trying to get your user credentials. And if they get your banking credentials, they'll take all your money. That's what happens. They'll use your account to transfer all your money to some other account, and you'll never get it back. So pay attention, please. Don't fall for phishing emails. All right, last thing we're going to go over. For those of you running a WordPress website right now, please make sure WordPress itself is up to date and all your plugins and themes are up to date. More security holes in plugins and themes are being found every day, and these hackers are relentless. They are going to find a way into your website, and they are going to abuse your website. Now, they might not change anything that you can see as a visitor to your website. What they will do is they will put folders inside your uploads directory or around the core of WordPress that can contain uh, malicious content, links to download uh, viruses, or, or, or they can use your website's server as an attack vector for other websites. You might be part of a denial service attack. And you risk having your website taken down from your host or delisted from Google or Bing. So you can't have that. So if you're running a business with WordPress, if you're down or you get corrupted or you get changed, that's hurting your business, isn't it? So you need to be vigilant and make sure all of the plugins and WordPress inside is up to date. Also, what you can do is install a security plugin. Now, the one that I've been using, there are many of them out there, so I'm not specifically saying you have to use this one. This is just the one I'm using called WordFence. I like this service. Uh, what it does is it adds a firewall for your website, so it's preventing certain malicious traffic from getting in. It also turns on two-factor authentication for your WordPress website, just as I mentioned before. That's kind of important. You can also have it uh, block any people trying to log into the dashboard that aren't supposed to be there. Uh, it'll block malicious content. It'll block uh, SQL injection uh, attacks and other things like that. That's when they physically attack your database. So it's a good software to have. If you use the pro version of WordFence, you can block whole countries. You could say, why would anybody from Singapore want on my website? So you're going to block Singapore to keep that traffic from going to you. Or you want to block Russia for political reasons right now. Um, so that's an option for you. Download this uh, security software. Like I said, I'm using WordFence, but you can use uh, whatever, whatever one you prefer that would work with your system that matches your price point. So <laughs> remember, you get what you pay for but it's better than have, not having these security tools or at least uh, logging tools to help you manage your WordPress website. Now, that's just a tip from me. Um, I'm sure you know what you're doing because you're running your own WordPress website. Congratulations. I've been using WordPress for a while now. Now, not for any of my blog Oklahoma stuff. I write my own, <laughs> and I have my own problems with hackers. Uh, so, uh, but it's good software. It's reliable software. Yes, it has security holes, but so does everything on the internet. So, uh, ho hopefully this little tip will help you out. Keep your site secure. Okay. I admit this is not the best podcast I've ever done. I've stammered. I've stuttered. I've ummed. I've awed. I've mumbled. I've done everything that you're not supposed to do with a good quality audio production. 
I don't even have a script. I have bullet points. That's why it sounds a little rough. But this is a topic that I deal with every day. It's part of my job. I manage multiple WordPress websites for clients. Um, I'm part of a company that does security for multiple small businesses. Um, we handle backups. We handle endpoint security, intrusion detection, and uh, all manners of IT management. That's the company I work for. And I see the attacks that happen on a daily basis. Um, it's scary, <laughs> especially if your business runs on this. Uh, so I want you as the website owner to be vigilant, you know, don't click on those links in the email. That's the biggest vector of intrusion available is your email, you know, secure your passwords. You turn on multi-factor authentication. This stuff is important. And I want to express that to you. And I apologize if I'm boring you. I uh, really not my intention. Uh, but with hap what's happening in the world right now, um, it's important to know. Russian hackers are attacking your systems right now. Now, you might be thinking, oh, why would Russia be attacking me? They're busy with Ukraine. Well, what they'll do is they'll hack into your WordPress site and post misinformation in your blogs about what's going on in Ukraine and Russia. Or they'll put malware into your system, or they'll put uh, take over your server and you become part of a denial service attack against an electric company. So it's important that you be vigilant right now. Now, you might be thinking, well, why are you kind of singling out Russia? Don't China? And... Yeah, all, all it, it's happening all the time. It doesn't have to be a government doing it, but we know from security companies and information that Russia is actively doing it right now. So please be vigilant. Keep your thoughts in, uh, to the people of Ukraine right now. They can use it. And don't let Tucker Carlson fool you. This is a bad thing that's happening. It's not a good thing. So uh, I'm thinking every one of you out there. And uh, we'll have a better podcast next time. I promise. <laughs> See you soon. Did you know we have our own cafe press store? There you could purchase a t-shirt, coffee mug, and other great items with the Blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on them. So please head on over to cafepress.com slash Blog Oklahoma podcast. I've added even more great music to the Blog Oklahoma bonus playlist on Spotify. There are many hours of music for you to enjoy. I'll have links to this and more in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. And thank you for listening to the Blog Oklahoma podcast. Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.com slash contact for more information. Check our show notes for all the links from today's episode. And don't forget to sign up for our newsletter for all sorts of bonus content. This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma. Until next time. <laughs>